Hello, everybody. My name is Ashley Hannum, and I am the Curator of Archaeology and Anthropology at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. And I'm also one of the many Star Wars fans we have on staff at the Children's Museum. So today we are celebrating uh, May the 4th, National Star Wars Day. And today I have the honor of giving you guys a digital peek at some of our favorite objects in our Star Wars collections. Obviously we can't be at the museum today to show these to you in person. So we're gonna give you a, a sneak peek of our uh, top 10 uh, Star Wars items in our collection. And I want to assure everybody that I did consult with many of the Star Wars fans at the Children's Museum about these items and their rankings. So this was not undertaken lightly and uh, there was many, many Star Wars uh, fans inputs into these rankings. So we did take it very seriously. So now that that's been stated, we can, let's get started with number 10 on our list of Star Wars objects. So this is the early bird certificate. This was, um, a result of some interesting planning, uh, George Lucas knew that he wanted to have a toy line before the initial film was released in 1977, uh, but he waited until just six months before the movie premiered to even start that process of getting a toy line going, uh, mainly because he was concerned about the details of his characters and spaceships and his universe being leaked and potentially copied before his movie was released. So because of that really short notice, Kenner, the toy manufacturer, um, was not able to have the toys ready for uh, release by the time the movie came out, which was in May of 1977. And they still weren't ready by December of 1977, which was obviously the Christmas season. And just for some perspective, by December of 1977, uh, the Star Wars movie was the highest grossing film of all time at that point in time. So Kenner really did not want to miss out on the, the Christmas uh, toy revenue. So they released, in a weird stroke of marketing genius, released these early bird certificate packages, which were basically an empty box uh, with a mail-in voucher that kids could mail in um, to get the Star Wars toys once they were actually released. So it's kind of anticlimactic maybe on Christmas morning to open up an empty box, uh, but it did actually work out okay for these kids because the Star Wars toys, once they were ready, which is almost a year after the movie came out, um, they were really hard to find because they were so popular. So these kids were actually among the first to get their hands on the Star Wars action figures. Um, but these, uh, this the marketing strategy employed here became so legendary that the early bird packages were actually re-released in 2005, kind of as a novelty collections piece. So um, this is actually one of those re-releases. So um, not many of the original ones survive because the uh, they were kind of meant to be disposable. People would mail in the vouchers and then throw away the empty plastic. So if anybody has one of these original uh, early birth certificates lying around that they might want to find a new home for, maybe reach out to us. So moving on to number nine. Um, number nine is the Death Star Compactor Action Playsets. So this playset was released in 1982, and it's inspired uh, by one of everyone's favorite scenes in A New Hope. This is where uh, Luke and Han and Chewie meet Leia for the first time. So it's really when the, the main group of our uh, Star Wars heroes are together for the first time. And it's uh, when they really go on their first big Star Wars adventure. They have to rescue Leia, they have to evade capture and escape the Death Star. So this playset, um, it originally included the little dueling um, Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. It included a bunch of stormtroopers, uh, Princess Leia, and of course you can see in the picture maybe uh, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker in their stormtrooper disguises. And it even has a functioning trash compactor in there. So everything you need to insert yourself into a Star Wars adventure. Um, it's also an example of one of their micro collection lines. So most of the really popular Star Wars toys were the 3.75 inch action figures. And these guys, you can't really tell in the picture, are teeny tiny. These are about one and a quarter inches tall. So these were originally um, used as kind of a diorama. You set up your diorama and um, make it more of a display than like a pew, pew, pew <laughs> blaster battle. <laughs> Not sure why I did that. So let's move on to the Chewbacca bandolier strap. So the Chewbacca bandolier strap um, was our, it's our number eight toy and it was released in um, 1983 with the Return of the Jedi. Um, and so as you can see in these pictures, it was designed to hold all of your uh, Star Wars uh, action figures and all their accessories. And it mimicked obviously uh, Chewie's iconic bandolier strap. So we think it's an amazingly geeky toy and even better, it's a toy that you can wear. So that's pretty awesome. 
And so if you're ever looking for a way to you know, hold all of those action figures, look no further than this uh, bandolier strap. I can just imagine having this as a kid and putting all of my, you know, whatever Star Wars toys and whatever toys I could find from around the house into this thing and think I looked like really amazing. So I can see this kid in the picture here, Sorry. the kid in the picture. We always <laughs> look at how happy he is and like, we get it kid, we get it, we feel you. It's a pretty sweet toy. So that's number eight. Number seven, moving on. Number seven is the Imperial Shuttle Vehicle. This was released in 1984. So one of the things that people love the most about Star Wars is its iconic vehicles from TIE Fighters to X-Wings to AT-ATs. The vehicles have become really such an important and integral part of the Star Wars universe. So we had to include at least one vehicle on this list. So this is the Imperial Shuttle, and it was uh, featured first in Return of the Jedi. And this is what obviously carried uh, the Emperor around the galaxy, um, but also was used in one of our favorite scenes from that movie. When, um, as you can see in the picture, it's Han and Chewie in the, in the picture. It's Han and Chewie in the cockpit there, and uh, they, along with Luke and Leia, commandeered one of these uh, Imperial Shuttle vehicles and used it to infiltrate the forest moon of Endor. So this toy functions just like the ones in the movies. It has the uh, wings that fold down, extending ramps and aimable blasters. Um, all you need to supply is some sound effects and try to fly casual. So next up on our list, number six, is the Moss Eisley Cantina Lego set. So this Lego set was released in 2004. So it's um, one of the newer toys that uh, we'll feature. Um, it has on its top 10 of our list or in the top 10 list for several reasons. Um, first of all, the set represents a really cool and iconic scene of A New Hope. Um, after all, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than Moss Eisley Spaceport. Um, but this is where we first meet Han and Chewie. Um, it's where we get a lot of quotable quotes from the movie. You know, these are not the droids you're looking for, for example. Uh, it's where we learn that the Millennium Falcon made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. It spawned the debate over who shot first. And if by this point in time, you don't have the Cantina Band song stuck in your head, you might be the only one. So in addition to all of that, you know, just really cool part of the initial Star Wars movie, it also is a representative piece of Star Wars Lego. So Star Wars Lego sets have been hugely popular um, since their initial release in 1999, I believe. And um, they're so popular, in fact, that the they have spawned numerous Lego Star Wars video games. Um, there's TV, like short um, films and uh, TV series that are all related to Lego Star Wars. So Lego Star Wars has really become a um, franchise in its own right. So we had to make sure to include a little bit of Lego in this list. All right, top five. This is number five, our Han Solo and Carbonite. So this is a life-size replica of Han Solo and Carbonite. So Han being flash frozen in Carbonite is immediately after famously not professing his love to Princess Leia is one of the most memorable scenes from The Empire Strikes Back. Um, and we see Han again in Carbonite in uh, The Return of the Jedi where he's displayed prominently as a trophy in Jabba's palace. So this prop is life-size, but it's not actually an original screen used prop. Um, it was it was made by Elusive Originals in 1997, so it's part of a 20th uh, anniversary of the original film's release in 1977. Um, but it was made using the original mold that was made to create the prop for the movie. So it's not the Han Solo in Carbonite, but pretty much as close as we can get. So we're a big fan of him. And he is on display right now at the museum outside of our pop culture gallery. So even though we can't be there to see it, we wanted to show share him with you today. Number four on our list is a Tauntaun. So we have several Tauntauns in our collection, but this one is by far the best in our opinion because it features the open belly rescue feature. So the original Tauntaun was released in 1980 with the um, Empire Strikes Back. And that Tauntaun was just a basic, you know, solid toy. Um, but about two years later, this was released in 1982, they upgraded the toy massively in our opinion. I think Kenner saw, um, big missed opportunity here and included the open belly rescue feature. So now not only can you have your little Luke or Han uh, ride around the Tauntaun and braving the rough terrain of Hoth, you can also save Luke from 
imminent death by putting him inside of the open belly feature in this tauntaun. So it's a hilarious toy that we think was a, was a work of genius on Kenner's part. And fortunately, this one smells just like plastic and rubber, even on the inside. All right, number three. This is our, um, our speeder bike pedal car. So this was uh, released in 1983, 1984 uh, with the Return of the Jedi. And this is actually a pretty cool car or pedal car because it's actually a ride on toy. I don't know if you can really tell the scale on this picture, but it is a toy that is large enough for kids to be able to pedal around on. It was made by Huffy, which makes bikes and pedal cars and things like that. So um, this was, like I said, part of uh, the 1983 Return of the Jedi toy line, but this was not a toy that you could just go in and purchase in store. This was a toy that was um, part of a sweepstake. So a lot of local re retailers would have these toys on display and you could enter a contest to try to win it. Um, only about one to 300 of these were ever made. And this is actually um, a very recent acquisition to the Children's Museum's collection. So we're, we're freshly excited about this one. It's, it's pretty cool. Obviously it was made to um, resemble the speeder bikes that Luke and Leia used on Endora to track down those uh, scout troopers. So. This was way cooler than any ride on bike or tricycle I had as a kid. So pretty jealous of this one, I'm not gonna lie. All right, number two, almost there. Number two is our collection of 3.75 inch action figures. Um, I know this is technically more than one object, but we're gonna count it as one collection because it's a pretty, pretty sweet collection. Um, this was uh, kind of an innovative toy in 1977 when the initial Star Wars was released there were um, not really any toy lines that were based on movies. There were plenty of toy lines based on TV shows and other pop culture, but um, movies were really seen as kind of quick uh, cultural things that would move by quickly. They were only in the theaters for a couple of months and then they'd kind of be out of people's minds. Um, but George Lucas, as I said earlier, always planned on having a, a toy line in relation to Star Wars and Kenner thought that they were really marketable. So they went for it and they kind of became the first of the now nearly ubiquitous uh, movie franchises that have made these toy lines affiliated with them. In addition to their uh, size or to their um, movie affiliation though, their size is also an innovative quality of these toys. Um, the most action figures at the time were a full 12 inch figure. So like, Ken, like Barbie and Ken dolls, GI Joes, all those things were um, tall 12 inch figures. So then um, these guys though, they knew they wanted to incorporate the vehicles. Like I said earlier, the vehicles are so important to the Star Wars universe that um, if you made a 12 inch Luke Skywalker, for example, imagine how big the, the X-Wing would have to be to hold him. So they couldn't just not have the vehicle. So instead of making you know, just the figures or making the vehicles out of scale, they scaled back the figures quite a bit so they could make um, vehicles in a practical size so that the, they could be included as well. So, and a lot of other toys followed suit with this and GI Joes were made smaller and a lot of movie action figures and things like that are now made in this smaller size. And also our collection is just pretty amazing. We have most of the uh, main and auxiliary characters featured in our collection. We certainly don't have every iteration of every character ever made. Um, but the ones we do have are in really great condition too. A lot of them have their original um, lightsabers and blasters and capes. So it's a pretty amazing collection that we're, we're pretty proud of. All right, that brings us to number one on our list of favorite Star Wars objects. This is our um, Millennium Falcon replica. So obviously it goes without saying that the Millennium Falcon is easily the most recognizable, iconic, significant ship in the Star Wars universe. It's really a character in its own right. It plays a major role in six of the Skywalker saga films and has a little cameo in episode three, obviously features prominently in the Solo movie as well. Um, Han Solo's relationship with the Falcon is stuff of legend and just, Tell me it doesn't get you right in the feels when you watch The Force Awakens and Han Solo first steps foot back on the Falcon and says, Chewie, we're home. Just gets me every time. So, But this uh, replica of the Falcon is a truly beautiful recreation of the original 32-inch uh, filming miniature that was used during the filming of the original trilogy. So Lucasfilm allowed um, Master Replicas, the company that made this, uh, they're a sci-fi and pop culture 
collectible company. So they allowed them basically unlimited access to the original filming miniature. So they could take uh, really detailed pictures and measurements and scans of it. So they could then go back and create an exact replica of that 32 inch scale. So um, the scale model. So this one is, it's a full 32 inches and the, the detailing on it is beautiful. It's one of uh, 500 in their signature edition uh, collection. So this one actually comes with the, uh, or not Han Solo, with Harrison Ford's signature uh, on the plaque in the front. So it kind of feels like Han Solo has blessed this model, which is another cool fact. But outside of that, it um, the detailing on it is beautiful. The paint scheme, it has like all the original um, weathering marks that the original Falcon had down to the last pipe and blaster. It's the exact uh, replica of the original. And it even has a, um, you can see in the picture, a mirrored mount. Uh, so you can see all of the uh, details on the bottom side of the ship as well. It's a it's a really darn awesome replica of the Millennium Falcon. We're all big fans of it. So that wraps up our top 10 objects from the Children's Museum of Indianapolis's Star Wars collection. I hope you enjoyed my my nerdy ramblings about Star Wars objects. And I hope that you all guy all you guys have a excellent Star Wars day and may the fourth be with you. <laughs>